With air conditioning? I didn't have air conditioning in my hotel. That hotel. air conditioner would and not have solved the problem in Mexico. And it was given to them. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'd like to know something. Isn't Sarah saying, God helps those who help themselves? So instead of giving this money to people that are going to spend it like that, and if you don't have that much money, keep it. Spend it on yourself. Pay your hospital bills or pay whatever it is. Yeah. See, what bothers us, Estelle, is that you're so vulnerable to this stuff. Well, that's true, Phil, but I just, like I started to answer the lady. At that time, I thought everything, that, that they were really good, honest people. I, when it hit me, I cried for two weeks. Over here. I Night and day, you. I couldn't sleep. Excuse me. I just have to ask you all, what do you think you're going to get from giving the money? What is it that you want when you give them the money? What do you think you're going to get from well, it? Well, listen, honey, I've had a disease for 38 years, and I can't go to church. But she wants the money. But the them. money. I was giving the money as if I was going to church and tithing, you know, to a yes. church. Yes. It is what the Bible says. You were you meeting tithing. your responsibilities according to your own biblical uh, According to my own biblical belief that I should tithe. How are you there? I can't. Go, Go ahead, caller. Go ahead. I'm a teacher for the Board of Education, and I've been, I was a faithful believer of the PTL Club. I used to give my donations uh, every 15 days. That's how I get paid. Yeah. But now I feel very discouraged, and it's gotten to a point when I don't even believe in God anymore because I had so much faith in the PTL <clears throat> that any ministry that would approach me to get me into their ministry, I just block it out of my mind and tell them, you know, like, no, I've had a bad experience, and I don't believe in God you, anymore. You do, we do have to wonder uh, how many... Uh Fates have been shaken by this, and uh, you know, is is this uh, the best thing that happened to atheism? Yes. Uh, my pastor tells us to keep our eyes on Jesus, and I think um, in these ministries, so many times, um, they become like personality ministries, they do. you know, and they're focused <laughs> on these leaders. And another thing I would like to say is with the IRS, the FBI. And now the postal authority is investigating this yes. organization. How can they continue to ask for more money? I, I, I have a Jerry young man Baldwell here. is sending out. How does this go on? Why right. don't they close it down temporarily, at least till we have the answers? But they're continuing to ask for more money. Yeah, yeah. It's just ludicrous. Let me ask John Wallach to get in here. You're from Raleigh, North Carolina, John. You sold your TV set to send money to Oral Roberts. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> uh, you're laughing now. Uh, was this the uh, God will take me if you don't send me money up here? No, this was a bit before that. As a matter of fact, I was living in New York at the time. I am a native of New York. But uh, just to answer the question, that uh, the statement that this woman made about uh, keeping your eyes on Jesus, this was a difficult part uh, of my involvement with Christianity. That it's hard to keep your eyes on Jesus when there are so many people interpreting exactly what Jesus means and intends for your life. Right. Your pastor is uh, the visible representative of Christ on earth. Uh, it's very difficult for an average, for the average person, if he's not a mystic, to, uh, to understand exactly what Jesus or God wants. And most people look to their pastor to interpret the Bible for them, to give them guidance, right. to suggest what they should do with yes. their lives. Uh, was Oral Roberts your lead man? And no, he wasn't. I was involved in a Pentecostal ministry. It was a very small ministry here in New York. But I did spend a lot of time watching TV. When I became a Christian, I turned my back on the world entirely. I gave up all of my habits, my worldly habits, uh, and I spent my time either reading the Bible or watching Christian ministry. I had just dropped out of uh, college at the time. I was living on welfare. Uh, I was in a very bad mental state of mind. And so I relied 100% on spiritual leadership, either from television ministries or from my local pastor. Yes. Uh, well, what's your feeling now, John? Well, I, right now, I'm, I'm not a Christian. I have turned my back on the religion entirely. You, you haven't, uh, have you bailed out on God himself? Or? Yes, I have. You really? I sure have. Are you an agnostic, an atheist? How would you define I that? would say an agnostic, yeah. You're not, definitely, sure. not, not an atheist, but definitely an agnostic, yeah. And, and how would you explain that? What, 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 how do you, what do you understand that word to mean? Well, I, I would say that there, there probably is a God, but there's no real means of proving it conclusively. What got you here? What was there, an event? Was it the sale of the TV set? In the... No, it was just the... I kept seeing a difference between what 
pastors and Christians were saying and what they were doing. Uh, when I first gave, all of a sudden, as you said, I suddenly wound up on everybody's mailing list and everybody was having a crisis. Every single ministry that wrote me was having a financial crisis and the crisis went on from month to month. Now here I was living on welfare and sending welfare money to these people. Yeah. Uh, but John, you're a smart guy. Well, you know, I think sometimes the, the, the core of religion is that you turn off your critical faculties. You have to in order to have faith. That's the whole idea of faith, that you turn off your critical faculties and put yourself in the, in the hands of someone who is supposedly competent to guide you spiritually. We have other people we want you to meet here, including the founder of Fundamentalists Anonymous. No kidding. There's a group you can go to to clear your own head out if you feel that you've lost your will or part of your own decision-making ability to a charismatic figure. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Well, that's the PTL uh, opening, uh, as was once uh, the uh, video signature of Jim and Tammy Baker. Are you there, caller? Go ahead. Yes, I am. I just, you know, I, I see these people talking here. I just like to share my story. I'm in my mid-20s, and I, I have my own company. I, I do fairly well, but I went through a crisis, and I ended up giving about close to $3,000 to the PTL club. And when all this happened, it was just like reality slapping me in the face. It really... You room. thought you thought the contribution would help you out of your crisis. Well, it, it, I needed the religion. It, it, it felt like it gave me confidence again. Yeah. And it, it was, I don't know, it just it makes me think back to like Jim Jones and what I mean. What is it going to make the American people? I mean, me included. What is it going to take for the people to think and to learn? I mean, they're not killing anybody, but they're certainly raping the American people of their money and their dignity. Very good point. Hang on a minute. <laughs> you know. Um, a little nervous. Okay. The ministers on TV are very good talkers. They're con artists, they're swindlers. Yeah. They feed on and eat up people who are old, lonely, vulnerable, and are homebound. And I think there so should what? be a law. How? What happening? kind of law can you have? Next thing will be a law against gray haired talk show hosts. I mean, how? <laughs> I don't think they should be allowed on television to have ministers. In order to uh, justify the means, we have the, the two types of people, some who are better off and some who are not so right. better off, and perhaps the PTL should compensate those who are less well off and give them back yeah. the money. You instead know, it of certainly paying does. Them. Yeah, and think of that property. Sell that. How much we get for the slide? Well, yeah. I'd like to know what's the difference between giving it $3,000 to a church, yeah. why give it to somebody that you only see on TV? Like, what does that do for him? What did that do for him? It made him feel better. Or, like, I have a question for the couple there. Now, if Jimmy, if you didn't go to Jimmy and Tammy, you two wouldn't have been together now? No, no. not Jimmy and Tammy. We've never met them. No, it's, I mean, it's the ministry that they... The yeah. ministry, yeah. Well, I can't you say that because... I would have kept you together if you have that kind of faith. It's, it's very possible. It's a, it's, it's a strange story, but we went to a lot of different places before this... That was the last pastor. resort. We tried a lot of different things, including prayer, and nothing seemed to work for us. Uh, we know the Lord took us to PTL for a reason, not because of Jim and, Jim and Tammy Baker, but he used that ministry to heal a marriage for us. Healing. Let me introduce Lynn Hochstetter. Uh, is I pronouncing you right? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh You're from Wisconsin. Now, this is just, we're here to at least share with you <clears throat> the fact that you don't have to be on television to be disillusioned. Or, or surrender to a television ministry. You belong to a uh, Baptist church. In fact, you were the church secretary for five years. You left in 1981 because? Uh, because of the abuse my child was getting in the Christian school. And uh, we finally realized that we've been taken advantage of. Our whole lifestyle had changed. Uh, really? Like, uh, your lifestyle had changed. You mean? Uh, we com when we uh, became good Christians, we cut off all of our relatives and our friends. Our friends was the only people in the church. And being that I was the secretary, um, that was even a smaller group. It was only the elite group. Yeah. So we were only allowed to be with those people. I don't have to tell you that the issue of, uh, how do we want to say, mind control or the issue of surrendering your own common sense to a religious figure mm -hmm. is hardly unique. It's happened apparently for as long as we've trod the planet. 
what would you do about this now as you look back on it? What have you learned, if anything, about because of this experience? Um, I've learned to trust God only and not to go through a man, not to go through a mediator. I was, I was people worshiping. Really? We would go to him for all of our decisions and all of our, our problems in our lives, and we wouldn't go directly to God. Is it your experience, is it, do you feel that, the, that this exists in lots of places in local churches around? I, I can't say for every fundamental church, or, but I know that we did in ours, and the uh, churches that, social, that uh, socialize with us, yeah. Are you there, caller? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to say that I would hate to think that by people not giving to these Christian ministries that it would be taken as a vote for atheism. We have to remember that when we give, we are giving to the Lord, and Jerry Forwell has certainly been trying to get the ministry back on the track that it was started. Well, what was the track it was started on? Uh, yeah. What was the track on which it was started? To reach souls and to help people out, as we're hearing here on the television with this couple that received help in their marriage. Yeah. I but I don't ever want to think that I was giving to any person. Hang on. I have a big problem understanding that i got to give to somebody who drives around in a Rolls Royce and has a Well, she agrees. She agrees. Now, this woman is making the point. She acknowledges abuses, but she says the ministry, as do uh, the man of They think the uh, ministry should be saved. Yeah, but you mentioned that you're, you went to your local pastor and they didn't help you. My question is, did they drive a Mercedes-Benz or a Rolls Royce? No. Uh, was there any money abuse in your own uh, experience with your church, Lynn? Yes, there was. There was? Yes, I saw, being, being a secretary and in the office, I saw a lot of things going on that were financially not kosher. Um, I was afraid to say anything. <laughs> no pun. No pun. <laughs> Just, the Jews want you to leave them out of this. <laughs> My apologies. Uh. Huh? Um, I saw, saw many times going into the vault and taking money out uh, to take somebody to dinner. Yeah. Uh, I saw misuse of, misuse of funds quite often. Yes. Yeah. All right. We have asked the man who will give us all the answers. <laughs> Richard Yao joins us. You are founder of Fundamentalists Anonymous. You're chairman of the Fundamentalists Anonymous Legal Task Force. Were you once one of these folks? Yes, I grew up in an independent Baptist church just like she did. And I know exactly how people could fall for this. It's got nothing to do with intelligence. Now, a few weeks ago, uh, Fundamentalist Anonymous, which is, by the way, still the only national support system for people who want to leave this kind of, right. uh, quote, bad religions, you know, bad religious experience. We have formed a legal task force to help people like Estelle or Lucy. Uh, they've got claims against people like PTL and Jim and Tammy Baker. They gave money so that the gospel could be spread through television, not to hush up a sex scandal. And we've been getting a lot of complaints from... So you uh, think in law. You're a lawyer, are you? Yes, I'm a lawyer. I used to work for a Wall Street law firm. Uh, you're a lawyer, and you think that there's definitely... This is actionable. Oh, it's absolutely actionable. Like uh, in the case of Lucy, for example, there's a breach of contract. Lucy has given $1,000 so she could stay three nights out of a year for free at the Hotel in Heritage theme park. Right. They broke the contract. They're not returning her money. And there are lots of people out there like Lucy, and they're all coming to us because they've got a complaint there. What if any kind of legal action is underway? Well, we have received uh, complaints in, in all these areas from uh, PTL people, from people like Lynn, for example. It doesn't just happen at the TV evangelist level. And what we're trying to do now is we're trying to focus on the best possible cases we have. And we're going to be announcing, you know, very interesting uh, things. Class action, thing. would you call it? That's a possibility. We'll have to work it through the bankruptcy court uh, that because PTL has declared bankruptcy. But if any people out there, you know, are in the same kind of situation, <laughs> you've given money to PTL and you feel you have a claim, you know, you could write to the FA Legal Task Force. I'll give them that address before the end of our program, and we'll be back to let this audience in on this in just a moment. Uh, I've been following the charismatic uh, evangelists and, and cults for a long time, and I got myself on the Jimmy Swaggart's mailing list just out of curiosity. And uh, one example of the hard sell tactics that the organization is using uh, are letters recently with statements to the effect that. Uh, just as the, P the PTL's demise is a result of some kind of satanic interference, any withholding of money to Jimmy Swaggart's ministries is a result of any kind of, uh, 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 I guess, outrage 
resulting from that is also the satanic action. You so, don't send to us the devils at work. Absolutely, yeah. And they've also broken it down, uh, how many souls are saved per dollar. Oh. And I've, I've received letters telling me that if I didn't send a specific amount of money, that my withholding would result in the damnation of so many souls. I would be directly uh, right. responsible for that. Hang on a minute. This was not in direct response to that, but I think there are some people on television that are very, very worthwhile. Billy Graham makes some sense. Robert Shula makes some sense. And I don't think we should uh, castigate everybody just because of these few. Yeah, well, so, so, right. so, so, I'd like to answer that gentleman. What? I'd like to answer the gentleman. The problem there is what you say may be true, maybe so, but Jim and Tammy Baker have hurt that ministry. They claim that they've repented. But we have another problem, Lucy. This man is free to announce his belief regarding certain legitimate evangelists. I am sure. And sure so that, am I. Sure, that's and, fine, but huh? I feel there's something drastically wrong when people could get on television, raise hundreds of millions of dollars, and not be required to issue financial statements well, to anyone. Can't Richard, uh, can't you know, we say this? First of all, apparently the IRS was at the door of this mm -hmm. ministry in right. 1980. They should have been there earlier. I, they backed away uh -huh. because we had a powerful political influence. Which, Absolutely. Which they were exerting on, certainly on the uh, Reagan uh, groundswell. Absolutely. This is not to suggest that Reagan in any way endorsed, right. endorses what happened. But it was rah rah for the Lord, and right. here comes uh, and all those American flags, and you couldn't tell the difference between America and Jesus. People were interchanging these words, right? And so we had a wimpy enforcement policy, right? See, if you set yourself up as a Christian ministry or church in this country, you'd be amazed you could do just about anything, and nobody would dare touch you. You see, and uh, if you hurt people, you see, I, the the truth of the matter is. Freedom of religion is not freedom to abuse. It's never been that way. Right. Except Bill, that you say, your understanding of abuse might be somebody else's understanding of faith. You see, I, I, can't, I can't go out and set up a church in which the use of cocaine is going to be part of the ritual. But we have the law Supreme Court is not going to get along with that. But that's, that would be against the drug, drug laws. Here, here's, here's my point. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible to codify in law a, uh, a workable document that would effectively prevent people like Estelle and Lucy from surrendering uh, minimum income dollars to a person who may not use them appropriately. No, but we can take those people to court when they have breached their contract with those people. See, there's a contract here. These people gave money so that the gospel would be preached through television. You're saying that Less than 3% of the money they gave went into that. Right. There's a breach of contract. Somebody gave money so he could stay at the Heritage Hotel for three nights a year. They couldn't do that. There's Bill, a breach of contract. we tried to give money to PTL and were turned down. Now, let me explain that quickly. After the <laughs> Lord worked in our marriage, we felt that he also, the Lord also impressed on us that in the first time we should tithe, give 10% of our income. We felt since what had happened to PTL that that's where we wanted our 10% of our income to go. We talked to a pastor down there about that. They refused our 10%. They said that goes to your local church and your local community. You go back, get in your local church if you've had any problems. We will take any of your gifts and offerings. We don't I want to die. I cannot believe that that was regular policy. I'm sorry. In Fort I'm just following what was said to us. Okay, over Why did they take my side? That right. is fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they take my thousand dollars? You had to hear my situation because I wrote and told them, but they never wrote a letter back. Yeah, well, I'm speaking yeah. from my own personal experience. I mean, I can't deny, you know, know personal experience. <laughs> <You're the fourth laughs> I'll tell you this, when I become a preacher, I'm going to have a hell of a time with you in my congregation. <laughs> yes. But why can't you know you're a true Christian instead of, I mean, isn't there something in yourself that you just know you're a true Christian instead well, of having to Well, what's wrong with belonging to an organization, though? I mean, that's very natural. I, if I you could know you were a true Christian, you would not need anyone to help you interpret the Bible. The Bible is so difficult for so many people that they have to have it interpreted, and therefore they immediately set themselves up to be fleeced. 
it's, it's, no, it's not by chance that Christians are called a flock or sheep because in many instances they're there to be shorn. And the minister is called the shepherd. Exactly. <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment. Well, I'm sure these people are going to give their money to somebody. So what difference does it make if they give it to the bakers or whoever they give it to? The difference is that if you're, if you're in your 70s and you're on Social Security with limited income, uh, you may not be in the best emotional position to make a common sense decision about where your money should go. Now, let's get this a little more dramatic. Suppose your daddy dies, God forbid, and leaves a whole bunch of money to your widowed mother. And she's sitting home all alone. And you look up, and she's written a check for fifty thousand dollars to one of these guys. Well, as soon as I turn my back, she'd write it. She'd write a different one. So what difference does it make? <laughs> Somebody that wants to give the money will give the money. I don't care who they're going to give it to. And I'm sure if the bakers, they brought the bakers back again, <laughs> you'd never have to worry about them getting with the, get caught with their hand in the till again. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great point. That's a great point. That's a great point because that's what we call undue influence, and that that's happens right. a lot of time. You know, uh, they prey on elderly people people who are terminally ill or sick, and they get those people to sign away most of their estate or all of their estate yeah. to those TV evangelists. And yeah. that's another area that the FA Legal Task Force yeah. is looking into. I just can't believe that so many people, if they want to give money, have local churches. They've got local churches. My grandmother used to that's watch, right. we that's them. Right. watch the sermons on right. TV you've and then give right. to this her local churches. You've got to realize what, what you give to your local around. churches. Yeah. You've got to right. realize that, yeah. that over this, this problem of happening in local churches right. as well, that people are being taken advantage that's of right. signing, oh. over their, signing over their home, social security checks I and everything. Can't, I can't, and really can't understand why people... Why, they don't even come back and say, the devil made me do it. They don't even ask forgiveness. Yeah. You mean the baker? The baker. Yeah, they they only it. ask forgiveness for uh, depriving their dog of the dog house. Yeah. That's all they ask forgiveness. Oh, what, I, what I can't understand is while Tammy is repenting and weeping through those eyelashes the hypocritical of her, tears. she hands Jerry Falwell a list. She wants $150,000 a year, a maid yeah. for a year, secretary, and three hundred thousand dollars for for Jim. Bill, uh, why yeah. she's repenting? Yeah, <laughs> I keep hearing uh, how the Lord has spoken to these this married couple there to help them in their marriage, and they should give this money to right. to the bank and so forth. Uh, I, I want to know how the Lord communicates with them. Well, did, did they get? Did they, That's true. They always talk to them. Did they get junk mail or did they no, come? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the Lord is watching you all. Answer the question. Yeah, let, let me say two things. Uh, we may get booed. Uh, we're not 100% uh, strictly here because of PTL. We're here because there's a ministry being done by a lot of TV evangelists. There's some rip-off artists out there, yes, but there's some mighty good ones that are helping a lot of people. They helped us when we stepped out of the major denomination we're in. All right, now, giving. We don't give to anybody. We're giving to the Lord. And if you're given to the Lord, you've got to trust the Lord to take care of it. Oh, but $1.9 million is given to Jim, Jim Baker, not the Lord. Uh, to Richard, yeah. what legal action is uh, uh, in place to prevent him from getting Well, I, yeah, I don't see how you defend this. Uh, I, I mean, I don't see what legal action can prevent the Elmer Gantry syndrome from developing. Well, by, by taking these people to court, Whenever they do something, when they, whenever they abuse the, the whole uh, process, we'll be providing deterrence for future uh, misconduct in the future. We're working right now with some of the best lawyers from some of the best firms in the country. And let so me, let, let me assure you that we are going to take action against those people. And the people are saying, hey, enough is enough. You know, it's time to throw the money changers and the merchants out of the temple. I'm almost out of time. Are you there, caller? Go ahead. Is the caller there? Hello. I'd have waited for you. <laughs> Bill, answer the gentleman's question about the... Uh, we, we don't, don't have, have much time, Dick. Okay, I'll try to do it real quick. God has spoken. 
He's turned our life completely around. We're on a different wavelength altogether, and he's leading us. We're following him now. And he and speaks through his Holy Spirit to us. And until you experience, you can't it's relate hard to, to explain, it. It's right? hard to explain. But for every miracle that you've experienced in your life, <laughs> believing what you believe, there's there are a thousand people in other denominations and sure. in other religions who can attest to similar miracles. Exactly. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Here it is, uh, the Fundamentalist Anonymous Legal Task Force's Post Office Box 20324. Greeley Square Station, New York, is 101. And SASE means sealed with a kiss. No, no, it uh, means uh, self addressed stamp, stamp envelope, please. <laughs> Phil, uh, can I, yeah. Phil, can I Lynn, say one thing yes, about yes. the legal task force? Sure. I'd encourage anybody that's out there uh, listening today, if they have a problem, folks they've been taken advantage of by their local yeah. preachers or PTO, to be sure and write that. John, I am very impressed with your insight on this thing, and I think you also made a very important point, and that is the issue of criticism, which is disallowed. Pardon this personal reference, I know something about this. To criticize a church or a religious organization or religious policy is to earn what we used to call in school the ad hominem argument that, right, you need a psychiatrist, you're bitter, you don't love God. You've got some personal sin that you yeah. haven't confessed. I have a personal, there's a personal, <laughs> uh, you, something in your childhood. The relentless pressure on a person who criticizes anything remotely religious, and I think you're right, I think that this, uh, this uh, barrier that's built against this kind of self-examination enhances the abuses that happen within it. And the right wing was successful in some ways in suggesting that those who criticized American policy yeah. were similarly somehow, uh, it's the love it or leave it. Well, I got involved in, in, in an organization in, in Raleigh that actually mixed politics and religion. And, and to be a Christian was to be a super American. And you're right, it's, uh, it's very much prevalent in you know, the, the southern part of the United States. I just feel that once religion in interferes with your intelligence, and it's not worth it. Well, when do you know? I mean, uh... I think that when our eyes are not completely fixed on God, then all of this creeps in. Man fails us, but God does. But how right. can still, you still, God without, without being guided? You know, as a as a mainline Christian, you know, uh, I'm a mainline Christian. I go to an open-minded mainline church, but. You know, the good guys in the religious industry don't need to worry about what we're doing. It's the bad guys, and I want to make them sweat, yeah. you know. But, um, does, but doesn't, <laughs> Richard, doesn't Chapter 11 protect them? You have no, LTV employees who are not getting uh, pension benefits because of Chapter 11. Can't, doesn't Chapter 11 protect PTL like it protects all other companies from the invasion of law? Well, I wish I, I have enough time to explain uh, the whole thing to you, but uh, very interesting things could materialize despite Chapter 11, and we'll keep in touch with you about it. When was PTL first established? Well, PTL is how old? Uh, 74, something like that, yeah. probably. I wonder, do we have time to say, let the buyer beware? Yes, we, you do Absolutely. have time. Absolutely. Follow that, then that. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. People feel the desire to serve the Lord in some way. They should look at the sponsorship on a one-to-one -one level, where they can see the progress of their money. Yeah. yeah. The ten percent that you did not contribute to the PTL. Did you The real big problem is everyone is looking for an instant savior. Everyone wants to be an instant Christian. You can't do it. You have to grow with Christ. You can't Amen. send money to anybody. Amen. Well, Estelle. Phil, I think it's just a pure abomination in the sight of God that religion has got to suffer in this. Nation Service hours. provided and promotional fees paid by the following. When it comes to thinking of new ways to crash test cars, no one goes farther than Volvo. Volvo, a car you can.